Welcome to uh, the April uh, subscriber tasting. We do this every month for the people who do our Moon Goat in the Mail membership. Um, so we're gonna taste through the four coffees we do if you get all four. Um, and they are in order of how we're gonna send them out. Um, so if you are just getting one, you're gonna get the first one. And if you're getting four, you're gonna get four. Uh, they all do come out onto the retail shelf at the end of April for sure. So you will be able to have access to these even if you don't subscribe, but subscribers either get a sneak peek, the final profile, or in this case, just a nice discount. So uh, it's it's gonna be worth it. If you're getting the four, you're already winning. Right? You're, already, you're winning. already winning. You're already <laughs> winning. And I'm joined today by uh, David, a friend of the brand. Uh, he did our Kickstarter video and it was just a huge fan from the beginning. So I figured, Let's get somebody who knows something other than coffee in on one of these. So, I'm an OG, OG to the Moon Goat story. That's right, cheers. We're goat. tasting okay. uh, coffee from Thailand. Okay. Mm. Thailand's a pretty unique origin. You don't really see it too often. Um, and it's got a really unique flavor to it. So we love it just as a coffee, but um, you also get some really distinct flavor notes. So yeah, I mean, Back on, back on me, I know nothing about how to taste coffee. I've done one tasting class of, the, of I mean, as a consumer, that's pretty. You're basically hard, a professional. But I don't know how to do the slurp. But I you can don't need sit. to know how to do the slurp. So th this one we uh, we say reminds us kind of like of a cantaloupe, where you get a little oh, bit yeah. of fruitiness. It's soft. It's melon like. It's very easy to drink. It's perfect for this time of year. It's from uh, Chiang Rai in Thailand, uh, and it's from a old army compound that they converted into a coffee farm. So it's really cool. It's, a, it's still very commune oriented where they, uh, you know, are almost self-sustaining on the coffee farm. They grow subsistence crops, so food that they can eat and coffee, and uh, they grow um, a Timor type, a, a coffee from the island of Timor that's an old type of coffee. It's got some really cool flavor notes and some nice complexity to it. So for this, if I'm if I'm getting mm -hmm. this in the mail, uh, what's what's the recommended? This tastes delicious. I'm assuming this is a pour over. This is a pour over. Okay. At about a 16 and a half ratio. Okay. One part coffee to 16 parts water, and that's how I would recommend this be enjoyed the best: a pour over or drip coffee. If you were gonna do it as espresso, I would go a little bit longer than usual on, on a typical coffee, just because it can handle that stretching um, and it also kind of mellow out some of that acidity that's really pleasant in a brewed coffee, but might be too punchy in an espresso. Can I ask a dumb question? Ask a dumb question. <laughs> so is there like, I never know what I'm supposed to use the beans for. Like, is this like, don't use this in espresso, but but it's a pour over, like don't, you're gonna ruin it if you put it in the espresso, like, I, I, like or should I never use it with milk? Like, it's a I don't great know. question. Are there rules? That's a great question. <laughs> it would be like, it, let me just break it down for you in photography terms. Okay. This would be like using a red to film a, like a little tiny video for <laughs> some subscribers. No one would do that. Nobody <laughs> would do that. No, no, no. The, with all of our copies and just like with any camera, a good photographer or a good brewer can make it work for any purpose. And for us, we try to roast as best as possible so that you can use it for anything at any point. And then we try to steer you with tasting notes that will either entice you if you're the kind of person who likes less fruity coffees and the one that likes it with more fruity or lower acidity, higher acidity. It's a complicated answer to a simple question, but the simple answer is you can use any of them on espresso or any of them on brewed coffee. Oh. However, the ones with the more classic notes we would recommend for espresso. But we call it an Omni Roast. Right? I would say that's delicious as a pour over, so start good. there, because that right. is very good. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> grab the next coffee. Really sweet too, this one? Super sweet, we can do, do any of them. We just need to see what it says. Yeah, cool. So this is the one if you're getting uh, four, you'll get this one just so that you know what you're missing out if you're only getting one or three. Uh, that was really good. I'm gonna vote that one my favorite, even though we haven't tried the rest of them. I'm just gonna double down. Favorite right now. That's probably gonna be your favorite. Cantaloupe notes, <laughs> Thailand honey. So it just went down so smooth. It's a very smooth coffee. Second one, coffee from Ethiopia, right. Gadeb. This is a natural. So this one was a honey, which means they take the peel off the fruit, but they leave the fruit on. This one, they leave the whole fruit on to dry and you can taste that it's got some more fruitiness. I would say more pronounced fruitiness if you're gonna use a tasting term. Yeah, this tastes less sweet. I was like, the cantaloupe is like sweet. Super sweet. sweet. And then this is like, 
I don't know. Co- more coffee flavored. But if, <laughs> yeah, more coffee flavored. That, but that's a great that's a great descriptive. And to me, what I would say is that this is got some like florality. Like yeah. it tastes like flowers in a way. Yeah. And in that way, flowers are always the less sweet version that's a precursor of fruit. So like, you know, uh, okay. flowers become fruit on a tree. Uh, and when you taste flowers, it's gonna be less sweet, wow. but you're gonna have more complexity and unique flavors in general. So for this one, I could say, gosh, it tastes like jasmine tea, and it tastes like green grapes, and it tastes like, uh, it tastes a lot like a very crisp and, and defined wine that is neither dry nor sweet it's just in the middle it's that really complex balance it almost tastes like a blend to me on its own that's really good um it's a naturally processed ethiopia it's in the yergachafe region which is what most people know but it's in a smaller town of yergachafe called kochere and then an, an even smaller farm called gadeb or, or station called gadeb within that really cool premium preparation which means that they um and worry station in Gadeb, um, where they they do it, and we put honey, cardamom, and jasmine. And this is what's interesting. This would be really a lot sweeter on espresso. Oh, wow. You get a little bit more of that sweetness that's missing from it on espresso because it's just a more classic flavor. Wow. So for you, which is better? What do you like better? If we're doing March Madness, just it happened, right? Let's do brackets. I'm going okay. this one. This, this one's one, this one. This wins. one takes out cantaloupe. I know. Oh my gosh. Why is that for you? Um, I just really love the floral flavors. Yeah, I very yeah. so rarely taste them in coffee that when I taste them, I'm like, oh yeah. That's like, I don't even know. It's like rose or jasmine yeah. or like um it just oh, reminds me good. of like like rose jelly almost in a way where you like you get that like aromatic in your uh, like in your nostrils while you're tasting it. Yeah. I love it. This is one I would definitely order like this uh, because I feel like with the flo- more floral coffees, like a black is like the best way to go. I feel yeah. Like if I, I, I would not it, put cream and sugar. Yeah, in this. I'd ruin it with that. But that's why we put it in the fourth because if you're getting four bags, you're pretty serious about coffee and you're gonna know to appreciate the floral okay. and not be you know disappointed by it. So we got my favorite and David's favorite and so this far. This one still wins so far. Yeah. That, okay. I, that honestly was just something I don't think I've tried or like had in a, a cantaloupe. That was like, like flavor. I yeah. could really taste like it almost was like if you're like, hey, I sweeten this a little bit, I would believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, this one, I think it just coming off this. I mean, we didn't brew them, so somebody could have dosed us with some sugar. <laughs> we'll no. see how this video ends. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be energized for sure. All right, so this next one is Sumatra honey. So from a very similar part of the world as Thailand and the same process, but Dave, a completely different flavor and a completely different flavor from the last coffee we tried. So Island of Indonesia, Sumatra, and this comes from uh, our friend Dave Hong, who is a uh, Taiwanese national, but um, he uh, sources coffee all over Southeast Asia. Super unique flavor profile. Wow. That tastes really good. Well, I'll say right off the bat, I have this at home and I turned it into a cold brew. Oh, cool. Uh, and which has been really good. This tastes infinitely better than what I have at home. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's really good. I think this milk, can I add some milk to this? Yes, I feel like. yes, I feel like. yes. And this is a great espresso coffee. Mm. Espresso, or it's like that cold morning coffee where you just want something warming. Everything about this mm-hmm. tells me like it's going to warm me up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like all the flavor notes, everything about it. It's got like a little bit of savory vegetable, like think orange bell pepper or, yeah. um, you know, maybe some like herb leaf, like, uh, I don't know, almost sagey. But we put marshmallow and cocoa because there's some pleasant burning flavors, but that I could never describe as roasty or smoky just on its own. It just reminds me of being like around a beach bonfire where you're like, you've got the like the feel of smoke, but it's like, it's a, it's a strange flavor and it's not dark roasted. It's not very dark roasted. It's just got that flavor of smoke and not in an unpleasant way, not in an acrid smoky, but like a sweet smoky flavor. So for the people at home, for, for me, mm-hmm. you're, you're sipping this. How do you come up with like tasting this? Walk me through. What am I oh trying to goodness. taste? What am I trying to like? I mean, we've gone so many different directions, but really our goal is to just try to describe the coffee so that when you're tasting it, you also go, 
Okay, I could at least see that. And it's not that we add marshmallow and cocoa flavors, but just that's the feeling that this coffee kind of reminds me of. If all food is the same and all coffee is the same, we try to pick foods that describe the coffee. So things that everybody knows. Everybody's had a cantaloupe. Everybody's had honey. Maybe you didn't know you've had cardamom, but you've had cardamom. And jasmine, hopefully you've been lucky enough to have some jasmine. Smart so Ronnie, everybody's had a marshmallow and cocoa, at least in the US, right? Like that's just... There's no way I would get to marshmallow here, but when you say it and then I sip it, I go, oh, marshmallow. <laughs> also, orange bell pepper is not a really exciting <laughs> flavor to read and be like, I can't wait to try that grind orange bell pepper. grind up some uh, orange <laughs> bell pepper. <laughs> exactly. But it's a really nice coffee. It is good. And as you said, the bell pepper, it's like the acid, acid or something mm -hmm. like that. Or like, yeah. It's not the like same pepper. level of, like, I would never describe a bell pepper as bright. No. But the same kind of brightness yeah. a bell pepper has. Yeah. Where it's, oh, there's some visual It's like interest. refreshing is in there. I, I yeah, exactly. Remember, yeah. Exactly. Whereas you might be able to say it's smoked paprika more accurately. But again, that doesn't describe the brightness. It doesn't describe... Nobody eats smoked paprika on its right. own. Right. You add it as an ingredient to things. So what do you, what do you say? Force rank them one to three so far. Gosh. Uh... This one might have taken the, the bag for me, just because this is my personal, I like to add a little cream, a little milk. So yeah, that's what okay. I'm looking for. Right. And this is my comfort in the morning. This is All like right. a warm hug. Easy. That's what I need. So this is, I can rely on this guy, but this guy like, this uh, is just the cantaloupe one. This uh -huh. one is like, I'm Change impressing people. If I'm trying to impress somebody, come on over. <laughs> Let me pour you a little bit of this. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, F finally, we've got our uh, flagship spring blend, Zing in Your Step. And uh, this is a really awesome coffee that uh, has none of these components in, but it's a Colombia and Ethiopia, uh, one in one, just roasted simply and put together. It's not just a blend, it's an emergency blend. You can just mix two together, two parts, and you get the one coffee. Emergency? As in mm -hmm. like... It's, um, it's a reference from Mad Men, if you're super into it. They they call any drink that's just two parts an emergency. Okay. <laughs> I like that. It's a it's a niche reference. So what am I taking? We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> cut to Mad Men clip. <laughs> cut, cut to cut to now I'm doing vodka. That's an emergency. <laughs> That is an emergency. <laughs> that is an emergency. It's a bad day. Uh, it's when Mountain Dew is a new drink that they're shooting. So this is half Colombia, half Ethiopia. First is Mountain Dew kind of flavors in here? Or? Yeah, Mountain Dew kind of flavors. <laughs> I mean, the closest coffee we probably have. This is one where, like, if I was getting weird, okay. like, really weird, I'd be like, this tastes like yellow and green. If I was getting, like, really weird. Off your rocker. But in reality, this has just a little bit of floral. It's got a little bit of... Um, of fruitiness and it's got a little bit of chocolatey flavor so to me it's got that like um mr goodyear bar mixed while you're like drinking a, um like a mountain dew or like a fruit punch or something so if you can't get enough sugar and you're just going candy bar mountain dew <laughs> everybody's done it <laughs> it's an emergency <laughs> Uh, but no, this one, this one, the other thing I would say that describes this one more than anything, actually, because I got a little weird with those tasting notes, is I would say that this one is balanced. This is yeah. smooth, balanced. It's not too much of anything. It's not too intense. It's not too sweet. It's not too bright. It's not too dull. It's got just a nice compound flavor. Where'd the name come from? Zing in your step, spring. Yeah. It's gonna put a little pep in your step for step. spring. I like that. I'm all about like, when I read this, I see this like that. It's just gonna get me like pumped in the morning. Yeah. Or just like, like, dude, even reading in the notes and stuff, I feel like that's like a mental, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a storyteller. <laughs> so like, you know, you're telling me the story, you're walking me into it, I feel like, I like that. I like yeah. that. I like a coffee that's like, hey, we're gonna pep you up. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> that that's kind of the, the goal. So not only are we having all these four amazing coffees, and we are gonna go in this order. David's second favorite, David's first favorite, David's third or fourth favorite. Which one? Ooh. Ooh, is this one? The Ethiopia or the blend that has some Ethiopia? I would get, the zing is really good. I feel right. like that's gonna be a a consistent one. And this is the order you'll get them in. So, you got a couple days once you see this video. You can add these on your order if you get it in, I think, by the 14th. So. Oh, everyone gets this one? Everybody gets that one. Of course. Yeah, of course. everybody gets that one. <laughs> Can't sleep on them. Yep, and that's a, that's a coffee we put on our shelves for $21, I think, and 
you get it for 19 shift and uh and it's a it's a really great coffee at that price we just want to hook people up with some awesome coffee uh in exchange for you guys supporting us and and being consistent and and being subscribers we really appreciate it, it means a lot and it gives us the flexibility to buy these really unique coffees from producers that are really excited to be able to offer a coffee that is that uniquely flavored um, and, and traceable. Which one was the hardest to make? The hardest to like roast or source? At both. Both? Um, probably, probably these two were the hardest to roast and source. The goats. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> hardest. The hardest. Well, so David, uh, I know that I'm putting you on the spot because we didn't prepare for this. We didn't prepare for anything, by the way. But... Uh, what are we doing in, not next month, but the month after that? Hey, we're going to be taking over Moon Goat's Instagram. We're going to be, I'll be on there yep. making videos of more of this coffee. But definitely, probably, hopefully get this in the mix. <laughs> uh, hopefully yeah. we haven't sold it out. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. if you see any videos coming out in June, those are that's from me. Yep. And, uh, yeah. and that's a really cool thing because David was an integral part of us starting and one thing I think we're both passionate about is storytelling and community. Um, and we're going to be able to do that in unique ways, sharing his videos on our Instagram feed, taking over our Instagram feed. But before that, we're going to have a film photographer um, who shoots on 35 millimeter film. Looks insane. Looks insane. For the two months prior to that, while well, he has a baby. <laughs> Uh, well, he doesn't have a baby. His wife has a baby, and oh. he he has some paternal uh, paternal bonding time. Um, so we'll do that, and we'll continue to cycle through some good friends and photographers, and hopefully recycle through uh, story by uh, image a couple of times Absolutely. and David's uh, work, and and it'll be really cool to. Uh, put our money where our mouth is and say we want to be about community. So if you know any very talented photographers, videographers, or gallery artists that want to take advantage of that, uh, we will be taking interest for uh, who's after him in August uh, or July, depending on how many videos he wants to shoot and produce and how much <laughs> we have to promote. So uh, hopefully, this is the longest one we've shot yet, but hopefully you stayed around for at least uh, the tasting notes. And uh Feel free to drop any questions in the comment box and uh, we'll see you uh, in the movies.